What's going on guys? I'm Renegade and this car here behind me is my beloved 1987 Volvo 245 DL. Now if you've been subscribed to me for a while you know that I've done a lot of work on this car and that I'm gearing up for a bigger project. Or for something that ought to be really damn cool. But first, there's something else I want to take care of. This is an unpopular belief, I'm sure, but I believe in it 100%. Horsepower is not the end-all, be-all, most important stat of your car. I don't care if you can make, you know, 2,000 horsepower or if you make only 25 horsepower. If your car can do 300 miles an hour or if your car can only top out at 40, there's something far more important about it. Braking. Braking is the most important thing about a car. It's got to stop before it can go in my mind. Because otherwise, well, how are you going to stop? So, I'm going to do a little brake upgrade on my Volvo here. Let me show you what I got here. So, I have here some new performance parts. Brakes. Well, brake rotors and brake pads. Now these came from a company called R1 Concepts. They've got some really nice options for performance brake pads, performance brake rotors, all sorts of stuff. And what's really cool is they have different levels. Now I went with the OE equivalent brake pads, but you can get all the way up to fully ceramic and they got some good stuff. I'll have a link to their website down in my description. Now so you know, I'm not upgrading the brake pad quality because the semi-metallics are fine enough for what I do. This is, after all, a daily driving car. I'm not tracking it. Um, you know, it's certainly not going to be on a quarter mile on a road course, and I don't autocross it. It's my car. Now, I like performance, but overall, it's got to be my daily driver car. And with a lot of the high-end performance brake stuff, like the ceramics, they're only really functional, and you only get the best out of them at high heat that you would achieve only while racing. I'm not racing. This is daily driving. I'm not going to achieve those heats, so why bother? I'd rather them be more efficient at the lower temperature. Nice, shiny, brand new rotors. Yes. You'll notice these rotors, this one's for my rear, hence the big top hat design, because that's where my uh, emergency brake slash parking brake slash handbrake, whatever you want to call it, that brakes shoes go. So, really big. You'll notice, not only is it brand new, but it's slotted and drilled all the way through. Yes, that's right, folks. Renegade is upgrading to performance braking on his 30-year-old Volvo station wagon. What? It's normal. Now, if you're not entirely savvy about how braking works, obviously, basic concept, if you've got hydraulic uh, disc brakes like I do, I do have disc brakes all the way around, all four wheels, you press on the brake pedal, it basically, through magic and unicorn dust and everything like that, I'm kidding pushes on hydraulic fluid, which goes to all your different brake calipers, which then pushes out through the caliper and pushes the pads closer, and they grab on to your rotor. So over time, this gets worn, because you're literally having them grab and grind and friction, and you see where I'm going. Here's the magic of slotted and drilled rotors, if you guys aren't aware. The slotted and drilled rotors allows for more airflow on the actual discs. Airflow can obviously go through the holes and it goes through the grooves as well. And the reason that they are there is for that airflow to cool down the rotors more. A solid rotor, like what I have on my car currently, there's a lot of heat because there's a lot of friction. 
So by allowing a little less surface area and allowing for air passage, like I said, through the slots, through the air holes, it allows the rotor to stay cooler. Cooler rotor means less heat in your whole braking system, which means your brakes will be more efficient. I did get all four rotors, which means I'll be able to do the entire brake system all the way around and have really nice brakes. So let's get to it. This is going to be a long process for me. I'm going to try and make it quick for you guys watching. Because, um, hey, maybe you guys have never done this. Maybe you don't know how. So we're going to go through it fairly quickly. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be cool. Mmm, old rotor. Yummy. Right there. Yep. That's a whole forming. Yeah, hence the needing to replace it. So much fun. Luckily now I've got Miss Stephanie here to lend a hand. Thank you. This is already uh, a few hours into it because a bunch of problems, but one of the things was I needed to replace bleeder screws because they were broken and rounded and yeah. The entire car is now up on jack stands. That was a whole ordeal. Wasn't it fun? It was terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll make an entire video about how this has been a fucking nightmare. Anywho. So, now it's time to actually put on the rotors, which is pretty simple. All you need to do is remove the caliper and put the new rotors on and then install the new brakes. Why do we install new brakes on rotors, even though I just replaced the front brakes? Mm -hmm. This is a test. So I, I did just replace the brake pads in the front. That's how I found out about this hole that's forming on my my rotor. The problem is that your old rotor has these grooves. Oh, kind of like a record for those of you who are old enough to know what a record is. And they wear into your pads. Well if I take this off and I put that nice new one on with these pads, these pads are gonna bore into my new rotor with the old pattern and deteriorate it faster. Which I don't want. So, take all this off and do it all. project that you have done prior. Now, while you're replacing your rotors and you got everything apart, now might be a good time to go ahead and repack your bearings, grease. I've never done it. I don't know when the last time it might have been done was. So, that's what I'm doing. Mmm, yummy grease. We clean everything off, repack it all with grease. Yeah. One of the very few times you'll actually see me wearing gloves because I really don't care enough. Repacking bearings. Which is a messy job. And someone on the internet is going to say, You're not doing it right, Renegade. Eh, well, <laughs> this is how I pack bearings. You pack them the way you want. Just literally working the grease into each and every one of the rollers. So it moves nice and smoothly, adding some more from the dollop in my hand, and continuing.
with doing all these is to take everything apart carefully. Obviously you don't want broken bolts and bleeder screws, which yes, I've had all of the above so far on this project. Loads of fun. But the rear ones are always a little trickier because and you have to pardon the noise, my neighbor's doing yard work. Um, the rear ones are always trickier because that's where your uh, parking brake shoes are. They're actually right here. So, they're always a little fun. A lot of newer cars have an adjuster on the back, which you need to back off to loosen your... Oh, come on. I'm not crack loose, I know you do. An adjuster on the back to crack loose and back off your uh, shoes. My car does not have such a thing. Luckily, my car uses a different spring and armature mechanism. Which is actually really nice, because I don't have to worry about backing it off and the difficulty that comes with that. In fact, on this one, I'll actually be able to pull it off. But a lot of times, what you actually have to do is take your hammer, <laughs> get out the old persuader, and smack it on one side, and then the other, and then the other, and then the other, and then the other. And basically, you have to beat the piss out of it. I'm not kidding, like, don't, don't sit there and, like, you know, you gotta like, whamma, 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 to try and get it to break free. Try not to hit your studs though, because then you're gonna have a bad day. But, you gotta beat on it for a while before it actually comes off. This time, I think I'm gonna be lucky and just be able to pull it off. Ah, get it off, cool. Obviously on the front, you don't have to worry about that, because it doesn't have these guys. Unless, of course, you're unlucky enough and you're watching this video and you know that you have drum brakes, in which case, sorry. But I don't know if you can catch it on camera. I know you can see a, a slight discoloration right along here. But there's actually a groove that's worn in. This spot here that's all shiny is much lower than this part here, which has kind of got that rust look going. And that's from 32 years of driving and wearing it in and it's getting a little thin it might still be in spec I don't know I didn't measure it but I figure because I'm doing the front ones I'll just do them all all these rotors have is either a locating dowel for your wheel which I'm currently sitting on or they have a bolt either way find your bolt hole or bolt holes on your hub, and then put this on. Oh wait, hang on, there's something I want to do first. When you have all this out and open like this, spray it down with brake clean because your shoes never see the light of day. And therefore, there's tons of nastiness that gets up in there. and you want everything to move smoothly. Once you find the hole that's threaded for your, your bolt to go on, go ahead and take it, put it on, match up your lug studs. Put it on and put your bolt through. In this case, my bolt is my locating dowel. Go, rotor's on. And then you just gotta put the actual brake caliper back on. Yes, I should have it being supported by something, not just hanging freely, I know. Leave me alone, it's fine. I've got two steel brake lines to go to it. They're not gonna, nothing's gonna happen. And someone in the comments is gonna say, famous last words. Now it's also a good time while your head's in here to inspect your bushings. If you're doing this and your axle is rotating, you need new rear bushings and, well, have fun with that project. There you go. These are the old pads. I don't know how well you can see on camera, but there are grooves worn into them. This one, brand new. No grooves. Grooves on the rotor. No grooves on the new one. 
That's why we do this, even though, look at all that meat. All the way from here to this metal plate is the meat of the pad. It's the actual part that grabs on and stops your brakes. Yeah, there's plenty of life on these, but that's why always replace your pads when I'm doing it now. So, second day of this, we ran into every problem possible yesterday, so, oi. Yeah, everything from rounding bolts and breaking bl bleeder screws and... But now we just gotta bleed out the... Well, I gotta put the rear brake pads in, bleed out the system, and we'll be done. Let's get to it. One brake. Two brake. Three brake. Four brakes. So Stephanie and I bled out all the brakes. I didn't show you that part because, well, by now you know how to do brakes, right? Even if not, the important thing is that unless you have a one-man bleeder, uh, you want two people. There's a bleeder screw. You put a clear hose on it into a, you know, into an empty container and you have someone press the brakes until they're done, until there's no more air. Now, new rotors, new pads, everything should be good, everything should be bled out. The only thing left to do is actually put the wheels back on and test it. Well guys, that was a, that was a lot of fun. The part I didn't mention and show was that I ran into a bunch of problems during all that. Um, I had some broken bleeder screws, I had broken drill bits, bro broken bolt outs, the whole nine yards. And it just took way longer than it was supposed to. It was a nightmare. But the important thing is that they're all done. The brakes work wonderfully. And now if I'm driving hard from using my brakes a lot, I'm not going to overheat anything and I'm less likely to get warped rotors because that's a bad thing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit the like button. And as always, please do subscribe. Do hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And leave a comment down in the comment section. Like I said, I'm gearing up for a big project. So here's hoping and fingers crossed everything continues to go well. And we can get to that project soon. So until the next time, guys, I hope you all have a good one. Keep rock and rolling. I'm going to keep taking care of this. I'll see you next time.